What's going on guys? Almost time for the wild card playoff game against the St. Louis Rams, but first I have a couple videos to put out. This first one here is going to be the final stats showing you guys the league leaders who's leading the NFL at the end of the 2012 season. So look at the quarterbacks and Manning and Brady are still in top form, obviously Manning not playing this year. But look at this, Christian Ponder, the most sack quarterback by far. And sure, I might hold on to the ball too often, but you'll see what's attributing to some of those sacks here in a second. We'll look at the running backs and Adrian Peterson on top with over 1,800 rushing yards. And Jamal Charles almost with 400 carries. Rashard Mendenhall has 17 touchdowns. And Ray Rice and Stephon Taylor, each with 11 fumbles. And I'm really expecting in a couple seasons in this series that we're going to see some really odd things happening with players aging and getting worse. And we'll look at the receiving. A.J. Green, number one in catches this year. And Wes Welker, he's going to be number one in touchdowns. And he's also over 100 catches on the year. Vincent Jackson with the most drops, followed by Kenny Britt and Andre Johnson. We'll look at the offensive linemen and Jake Long, he's the first in pancakes. I really don't care too much about that statistic, but what I do care about, we're going to look at the sacks given up. Chris DeGear and David Mulk are starting right tackle and center are each in the top 10 for sacks allowed. And so it may be time soon to get replacements for those guys. We'll look at the defensive players and Patrick Willis with over 150 tackles, but Paul Puzlesny with 161 leading the NFL. Sam Acho with 16 and a half sacks. We'll scroll down a little bit. We'll find our guys Christian Ballard, Kevin Williams, and Brian Robison. So what I'm looking forward to really is the statistical progression for these guys because Ballard and Robinson are both in the 70s, but I'm guessing after this year they're going to shoot way up, and that means our front four is going to be even more dominant in the future if things go as planned. Jamel Fleming, he finishes the year with three interceptions, and I forgot to say this before, but what happened when I got back into my franchise was it said I had to play the 49ers, which means I did not save my franchise after that last game. But what I did is I simulated until we lost against the Niners and we played the Rams. And the playoff picture is exactly the same way it was. But Adrian Peterson and Garrick Williams aren't hurt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them out anyways. Just because I already posted week 17 and it was my mistake for not saving. I'm not going to try to capitalize on that and play Adrian Peterson and Garrick Williams. So we're going to keep that going. We're not going to use them unless we win two playoff games. Because that's when they were supposed to come back if the injuries were still there. But back to the statistics, Chris Cluey with the best average, I believe that's the second year in a row. Checking out the returners, Devin Hester with the most yards, but no touchdowns and a far lower average than the guys who are leading. Patrick Peterson is number one on putt returns. We have Jacoby Ford number one in yards and Rodney Stewart number one in average or rookie. And Kenyon Barner gave him a lot of attempts. He only had 7.8 yards per return, but he did get us some good field position a lot of times late in games and we needed the spark on special teams. But we'll check out the Viking statistics now and ponder his first year as a starter. 23 touchdowns to 15 interceptions, not an amazing year. Adrian Peterson, 1,800 plus rushing yards and 11 touchdowns. We'll definitely miss him going forward in the playoffs. Looking at Toby Gerhardt to step up and I'm also probably going to sign a free agent. We'll look at receivers now. Plaxico Burris pretty much doing what I signed him to do. Caught 63 balls, 750 yards roughly, 5 touchdowns. I was impressed with him during the season. Made a lot of great grabs, some clutch plays. And I know looking at Rudolph, 20 catches, it seems like every catch he's had has been documented in my franchise series because every pass he catches seems to be a big play. Plaxico leading in drops. We'll check out our offensive line. And not that great of years for David Mulk, our first-year center, Chris DeGear, our right tackle, and Charlie Johnson, our right guard. And with Steve Hutchinson aging, our only real reliable lineman at this point is Nate Potter. Luckily, he was our first-round pick and is panning out very well. Awesome run blocker. So we'll check out the defense now. Chad Greenway, over 100 tackles, leading the way for this defense. Ballard leading in sacks. I'm expecting him to be a force next year to really go up in overall rating and some other attributes. Jamel Fleming played well this year. He was our second-round pick out of Oklahoma, but with obviously we have more problems with the secondary because Antoine Winfield is aging and some other guys aren't that great. So the draft is going to be a time for us to help sure up some of these positions once that comes. we got the playoffs coming ahead of us. 
and guys are going to need to be on the top of their game. Check out Ryan Longwell, 22 for 27, really didn't kick that many field goals this year, but Longwell, he's getting up there in age as well, and I just really hope he doesn't retire. Kenyon Barner got most of the returning opportunities this year with over 100 combined kick return and punt returns, and he did an okay job, one touchdown in the season, got us some good field position on punts, but I don't think this is really his job to keep for next year. It's probably going to be more of a battle coming up with more young players trying to make roster spots, and he has a really low potential, so uh, there's definitely an opening if someone can snatch that spot from him and play better than him. But he was a reliable returner. We'll check out the top offenses, defenses, and the team rankings. We had one of the lower passing offenses and the best rushing offense with Adrian Peterson leading the way. We'll check out the defense, and the Chiefs were number one in total defense, whereas we were more towards the bottom. I don't really like how it's ranked by yards, but that's what it is. Check out passing. Of course, that's going to be in the bottom ten. And here's the really surprising part. We're going to go check out the rushing yards, and the Bills are number one, and we are dead last. It really did not seem that way. We had some troubles at the very end, but I didn't really think that we would be the bottom run defense because the Vikings, they're usually known for their stout run defense, whereas now we're ranked last, but I don't feel like we're the worst rush defense. We definitely don't have the best linebackers or secondary, so I'm not really too worried about these statistics because that's all they are. I worry about more how we play. We have the worst turnover differential as well. I know we don't get a lot of turnovers. We only had 16 the entire season and gave up 32. I would like to see us get some more on defense, I do expect to with Jamel Fleming improving and us hopefully bringing in some more talent to help complement him, and we'll see how much longer Antoine Winfield's going to play, but you guys saw it, he got burned and beat a lot in this season, so he's really more suited for the nickel spot, but there's not a lot of guys I really trust on the outside besides him and Fleming. And here is the team schedule, and if a lot of people have noticed this, but we scored far less points than we allowed, and that's because we have had so many close victories. We had a two-point victory week one, then a seven-point victory, an eight-point victory, a two-point victory, a 26-point loss. So you see, we really didn't dominate too many teams. We had a lot of close victories, and we actually got dominated a few times ourselves, but... 10-6, go into the playoffs, get a home playoff game against the St. Louis Rams coming up. One more video between now and then. I'm going to show you guys how rookies perform this year, as well as the upcoming draft class, so we're prepared for that. And as usual, here are a couple videos for you guys to check out. We have Week 17 against the San Francisco 49ers, which was the last episode I posted in this series. And on the bottom, we have Week 16 against the Bears, the episode prior to that. So pretty soon, I plan on getting out the, the rookie episode probably tomorrow, followed by the wild card weekend game against the St. Louis Rams. I know a lot of you guys are excited that I made the playoffs this year and you want to see how our Vikings do. And so I'll get to work on that next episode with the rookies, and I will see you guys later.